Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Anando, and here I'll be showing you various solutions to problems uh, relating physics, chemistry, and math for grades 9 to 12. At the moment, I'm going to be focusing mostly on physics for grade 12 students, and I'm going to be using the Nelson Physics 12 textbook, uh, which is the textbook uh, used in Ontario high schools, so it uses the Ontario high school grade 12 physics curriculum. So those of you who are living in on, in Ontario, Canada, uh, might find my channel useful because I'm going to be basically going through this book and various solutions to the problems. And yeah, hopefully you find this useful and yeah, let's get started. So unit one is dynamics and the first chapter is kinematics, which you might remember from grade 11. So the first chapter, chapter 1.1, motion and motion graphs. So you might remember from grade 11, this is just going to be some review, a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So a good example would be velocity. Uh, let's say a car is moving at 5 meters per second east or some object is moving at 5 meters per second east. That object has magnitude and direction because 5 meters per second would be the magnitude and east would be the direction since it has both those parts you would say this is a vector quantity. So velocity is a vector quantity. A scalar quantity is similar to a vector quantity, but it doesn't have direction, it only has magnitude. So a good example of this would be time. So you would say 60 seconds, or 40 minutes, or two hours, or something. Some unit of time, but you don't say any direction for the time. And since you don't say any direction for the time, you only say the magnitude, which is like two hours, three hours, or how much whatever the magnitude you set it as, it only has a magnitude, not a direction, which is why time is a scalar quantity. Position is basically the straight line distance of an object from a reference point. So I can show an example right here. So let's say A is your reference point, and this is north, this is south, this is east, this is west. And then you move from point A to point B. So you're basically moving northwards. Let's say the distance from point A to point B is five meters and you move north. So after you move north and you arrive at position B or point B, um, you're, you could say that your position after you've arrived at point B is five meters north from your reference point, which is point A. So it's basically the straight line distance, as you can see straight line, from a reference point. So five meters north from point A. Displacement is basically the change in position of an object, so you could calculate this by the simple formula. Displacement equals d2 minus d1. And average speed. Speed is actually a scalar quantity. Some people might get confused with velocity, like how does velocity and speed how are they different? Like they look the same. If you look at the formula for velocity, average velocity, and you look at the formula for average speed, they look very s similar, but you can see that velocity has arrows and speed doesn't have arrows. Arrow means it's a vector, which means it has a magnitude and direction. Without the arrows, it's just a scalar quantity. So speed is basically the total distance traveled divided by the total time it takes to travel that distance. So let's say you go from so a certain uh, point, let's say point A to point B, uh, and that's 10 meters in two seconds. Your average speed would be 10 meters, which is your total distance, divided by two seconds, which is five meters per second. That would be average speed. <clears throat> average velocity is similar to speed, but it has direction. So here we're not talking about is it going east or west or anything. We're just saying it's going 10 meters at a certain direction. Well, not direction. We're just saying it's going 10 meters from A to B. We're not saying it has any direction. But for velocity, there has to be direction. So let's say we're taking the same example again. Let's say this is point A again. This is our. This is where we begin, and then we go to point B, and this is east now. So now that this is east, there's a direction. 
and since you're traveling 10 meters east to get to point V, you would, and you're trying to find velocity, you would have to put an arrow over this, veloc uh, the speed formula, uh, this, to make it a vector, and 10 meters east, because now this is, uh, this is the displacement from the original position. So the original position was 0 meters, and now it moved 10 meters east. So your displacement would be 10 meters minus 0 meters which gives you 10 meters east. So 10 meters east is your displacement, your time is still the same, and then your velocity would be 5 meters per second east. Fairly simple, and yeah, but it does get a little bit complicated in the questions moving forward. But once you get this basic concept, these basic concepts, you'll eventually find it easier to do the questions. So let's try a couple of questions. Okay, uh, a woman leaves her house to walk her dog. They stop a few times along a straight path. They walk a distance of 1.2 kilometers east and they're from their house in 21 minutes, 24 minutes. And then and then they walk back again in 24 minutes in the same path. So give your answers to the following questions in kilometers per hour. So part A, determine the average speed of the woman and her dog for the entire route. So one A, so if he goes 1.2 kilometers east and then he comes back the same path, if it takes him 24 minutes to go to that point and it takes him 24 minutes to get back again, that means his total, this time, time total equals 24 minutes plus 24 minutes, which equals 48 minutes. And since it wants the, the unit for the answers to be in kilometers per hour, I'm just going to go ahead and convert 48 minutes to, uh, to hours. So since there's 48 minutes, and there's 160 minutes in an hour, you just cancel the minutes and you're left with 48 over 60 which is which is you're left with 48 over 60 which is 0 0.8 hours okay so that's how many hours it takes to travel to the point and back again and the question says you travel 1.2 kilometers to the point and you take the same distance back so your total distance would be 1.2 kilometers plus 1.2 kilometers remember distance wouldn't have an arrow because it's it doesn't have a direction it's just a magnitude value so it'll just be 1.2 kilometers plus 1.2 kilometers so it'll be 2.4 kilometers. Now to calculate speed, you would just do speed, average speed equals distance, change in distance, or change in time. Distance is 2.4 kilometers, divided by 0 0.8 hours, and that gives you three kilometers per hour. That is your speed. Calculate the average velocity for an entire route. So now it's talking about, uh, let's go on to part C. Average velocity for the entire route. So if the person is here and he goes one point two kilometers east and then comes back 1.2 kilometers but this time it's west the displacement would actually be zero your total displacement is can be written as your uh, your final displacement 
or displacement 2 plus your initial displacement, displacement 1. You can think of it as that. So your first displacement, which is, let's say this is your point, your starting point, your first displacement is 1.2 kilometers east. And then your second displacement is 1.2 kilometers west. So your total displacement is 1.2 kilometers west plus 1.2 kilometers east. But now you might be thinking, west and east, how do you add something that's in opposite directions? Well, if you want to add them, you would actually have to make them in the same direction. You can either make them both west or both east. So 1.2 kilometers west minus 1.2 kilometers west is 0.0, .0 kilometers west. And you already have your time, which is 0 0.8 hours. So your average velocity is 0 0.0, .0 kilometers divided by 0 0.8 hours equals 0 0.0 kilometers per hour. Let's try question two. A bus driver begins to descend down a steep hill and suddenly sees a deer about to cross the road. He applies the brakes. During the bus driver's 0.32 reaction time, the bus maintains a constant velocity of 27 meters per second forward. Determine the displacement of the bus during the time the driver takes to react. So I'll give you some time to do this question on your own. So you can just pause the video and do it. And now I'm going to solve it for you. Okay. okay. So what you know is that the time is 0 0.32 seconds. And the velocity, the average velocity is 27 meters per second forwards. And you're told to find the displacement of the bus during the time the driver takes to react. So velocity, you know, is displacement over time. So you can just rearrange for displacement to find uh, the displacement, so displacement equals velocity for time, 27 meters per second forwards times 0 0.32 seconds the seconds cancel because meters per second times seconds is just seconds just cancel out and then you're left with eight point six four meters forwards if you want to do this in terms of significant digits because I know uh, many schools actually do it in terms of significant digits uh, so you just look at the given variables or given yeah a given variable value so 27 meters per second 0 0.32 seconds this would have two significant digits and this would have also two significant digits so you take the lowest significant digits and according to that you would round your answer so I'm not going to explain significant digits here you can look at another video for that or I might make, make a video afterwards or later on about significant digits but yeah if your teacher tells you to write the answers in terms of significant digits then just look at the lowest significant digits and round your answer to that so here would be two significant digits so 8.6 meters forwards is your answer if you do two significant digits.